Trey Lance to Houston possibilities. Do you say no, or are you feeling like Floyd Tree and say yes? And how Hiram Ryan's as the Texans' next head coach is the first step of getting rid of the Patriot of the South stench. Oh my God! Okay, it's happening. Everybody, stay calm. What's the procedure, everyone? What's the procedure? Stay, What's the procedure? stay calm. What? You are locked on Texans. Your daily Houston Texans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to a Monday episode of the Locked On Texan Podcast, a part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode of the Locked On Texan Podcast is presented by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is daily fantasy made easy. Pick two to five players, and if they score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match. Up to one hundred dollars with promo code locked on. That's prospects.com. Promo code locked on. I'm John Hickman. This is Cody Davis, and I want to tell you what Fred Warner said on Sunday after suffering a loss to the Philadelphia Eagles. He was emotional when he said he saw D'Amico Ryan's because it finally hit him. This was likely the last time in their last game together. Warner said D'Amico is the reason he's the player he is today, and the 49ers defensive coordinator is more deserving of a head coaching job. And it mm. does seem like between now and maybe the next 24 to 48 hours, the Houston Texans will announce D'Amico Ryans as this team's next head coach. By the way, J.J. Watt, uh, Andre Johnson, Sage Rosenfield, a lot of the old Texan greats got an opportunity to get together, which seems like they are in Houston at this time. <laughs> Everything is playing now for D'Amico Ryan oh, to man. be the, the next official head coach, I believe the sixth in franchise history for mm -hmm. the Houston Texans. Cody, let's get into it. Yes, sir. You said it best. And I spoke to a source on yesterday, as a matter of fact, um, in the middle of the 49ers loss to the Philadelphia Eagles, um, I spoke to one of my good sources and they told me that is everything that D'Amico Ryan's to the Houston Texans is all but guaranteed um, later on this week. John, as you alluded to, within the next 24 to 48 hours, there will be a quote unquote second interview. But I was told that second interview is just to hash out some final details in terms of what the layout of this franchise is going to be. Of course, contract money situations. And pretty soon, at some point this week, we will be on here on Locked On Texans talking about the six head coach. In franchise history, the Miko Ryans, it is all but official at this point. As a matter of fact, the only top other candidate for the head coaching gig here in the city of Houston was Jonathan Gannon, Gannon who was on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. And um, Gannon told reporters after the game that it doesn't matter what goes on, he's going to stay in Philadelphia. So, John. At this point, it just seems like they just gotta work work some um, some minor details out. According to Ian Rappaport of NFL Network, he came out following the game and reported that um, if all goes well, that is going to be the Houston Texans next head coach we have been covering this over what the last week or so now everything is lining up and it's all in the Texans it's like the ball is in the Texans backfield as of right now <laughs> if you are still wondering what D'Amico Ryans can possibly do for this franchise and this defense once his fingerprints is on this team which could take a full season or two Philly was ranked ninth in the league in passing yards per game with 236, the San Francisco 49ers held that team to 121 yards in the air on Sunday. D'Amico Ryan's coming to Houston is a godsend, and this is the first time where it feels like the light is finally hitting mm. on Pride Rock. And so, <laughs> uh, again, within the next 24 to 48 hours, if not today, on Monday, we will be hearing that D'Amico Ryans is officially the Houston Texans' next head coach, marking him the sixth in franchise history. And again, today's episode of the Locked On Texan podcast is presented by Prize Picks, your daily fantasy made 
Easy, super simple. You pick two to five players. If they score more or less than their prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. You can bet on the over-under on receptions, the over-under on rushing yards, the over-under on touchdowns, punts, field goals. They got all of it over at prizepick.com. An easy way to make some extra cash all on a safe app. Operational in over 30 states including Texas. And again, it's easy. It's safe. It's fun. And you're not betting against other people. You're not competing against other people. You're competing against the projections available. And first time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. So visit prizepicks.com. Make sure you use promo code locked on. Welcome back in Locked On Texans listeners and viewers out there. The Locked On Texan Locked On Network is heading out to the Senior Bowl. Get the inside analysis from hosts that cover the NFL's next generation in college and find out which NFL draft boards these players will be climbing all in one location. Subscribe to the Locked On NFL Draft for nightly live shows from the Senior Bowl on the Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday that we all will be out there at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Trey Lance to Houston, is that a real thought? Is that a real idea? And we have to discuss it. It's been floating around. Whether or not we believe it's smart or not, it's just a part of the discussion when you look at D'Amico Ryans coming to Houston. D'Amico Ryans has been with their franchise in San Francisco since 2017. They traded up for Trey Lance. We know that he has some type of familiarity with Trey Lance and some type of relationship. We do not know the extent of it, but... They've been working with one another. Of course, he's on the, on the defensive side of the ball, and Trey Lance is the quarterback. But they've been working with one another for the past two seasons. And I do think when you look at Trey Lance, there could be some benefits there. One of the benefits is he's 22 years old. He will be 23 by the time the season starts. He's still young. Also, his contract. Lance will cost the Houston Texans roughly $9.1 million over the next two years. And this is with Trey Lance coming off a season-ending ankle injury back in week two. Now, I don't know that the benefits of what Trey Lance could be for an offense as of right now, and I think it's difficult to say until the coaching staff is put together, but I think that would allow Houston to flirt with the idea of maybe trading back if that quarterback position became a non-necessity if D'Amico Ryan says, you know what, a part of me coming here is – I want a guy that I've seen work. I want a guy that I've seen possibly, you know, excel in film room sessions and understand the X's and O's the way I like my quarterback to to do. And that could, like I said, allow Houston to say, you know what, if we bring him over, maybe we can use that second overall pick to maybe trade back, get additional picks to help build this team, or maybe we can use that second overall pick to get one of the defensive studs out there, maybe a, a Carter, we'll see where Will Anderson lands, that can help this defensive line out. And I was reading an article that said Trey Lance would not have to be the savior in San Francisco. That's right. When Trey Lance stepped into their door, they already had all of the weapons around him. A great run, uh, a running, rushing attack, a great offensive line, great we- weapons around him, and a great defense to allow him to stay in games. In Houston, hmm. he may have to be that. He may have to be the savior. And we haven't seen enough of Trey Lance to definitively definitively, definitively say, excuse me, that he is ready for that role and that task. So the question would be, can Houston replicate what San Fran was able to do while building their roster? I'm going to say no. Right now, Houston doesn't have an Ayuk, a Kittle, a Debo, and more importantly, a Kyle Shanahan to orchestrate that offense. I'm going to have to say that I agree with you, John. And this is the only thing that kind of scares me about D'Amico Ryans becoming the Houston Texans next head coach. I don't know how much he's going, how much he's going to value the, the struggles that the Houston Texans have at their quarterback position. And that crossed my mind because when I take a look at him being a defensive minded coach, I look at what the Houston Texans need on the defensive line. I I take a look at the fact that with that number two overall pick, you can definitely go out and get a Will Anderson and Jalen Carter. Both of those guys can definitely go out and revamp the Houston Texans defense. And of course, 
with D'Amico Ryan's at the Hams, you're looking at a situation where the Texans can all automatically become, let's say, a top five, top 10 defense within a snap of a finger. However, in terms of the Texans quarterback situation, I think there's only three routes that they should go, and neither one of them involves Trey Lance. First and foremost, there's the dream scenario. Just throw a bag at, at, at Lamar Jackson and call it a day. He wants to be the highest quarterback in the league. Deshaun Watson has the most guaranteed at 230, if I'm not mistaken. Give him 231, 232. Give some draft picks to Baltimore and call it a day. You automatically have a, a top five, no lower than a top 10 quarterback. In my opinion, the top five quarterback in the league. But that's the dream scenario. The most realistic scenario, and I hope that the Texans and D'Amico Ryan stick to this plan, just go out there with the number two overall pick, just draft CJ or Bryce and call it a day. That would give you an opportunity to get a fresh prospect, not a prospect that you really don't know whether or not he's going to be your next franchise quarterback or a quality quarterback or whatever the case might be. No, go out there and get you a fresh prospect, CJ or Bryce, and build this organization from the ground up. And then there's the worst situation to where if D'Amico Ryan say, you know what? I will prefer to use our top selection on Anderson of Carter. Don't go out there and try to get a Jimmy Garoppolo. Don't go out there and try to get a uh, Baker Mayfield or whatever the case might be. No, just go ahead and give Davis Mills another opportunity if that's the case. And you never know. Maybe if you bring in a, a better offensive coordinator, a better quarterback coach, we might see a better version out of Davis Mills if that is on the table for the 2023 campaign. And I don't know how you feel about this, John, but I will prefer if that is the case. I would prefer to see the Texans just go ahead and stick to Davis Mills because the one thing that, that has always bothered me about Trey Lance, you mentioned it. We have not seen enough of this kid. This guy hasn't We've played seen more in more of uh, C.J. Stroud and Bryce Young in the past in, in the past season than we've seen from Trey Lance maybe in the past three years. So and, and that's, that's what I was and that's what I was going to get to. You know, I feel like if the Texans were to acquire Trey Lance and give him an opportunity. And let's say he's starting week one. I kind of feel like we'd be hitting the reset button and be saying all the same things that we said about Davis Mills because they were damn near was in the same boat. There's this two quarterback prospects who, in Trey Lance's case, he has not played a full football season since his second year in college in 2019 when he played 16 games. The following year, COVID, Play one game. The following year after that, 2021, his rookie campaign, he only played six games, but he was the backup to Jimmy G. Then this year, they hand the keys over. They had the franchise keys over to Trey Lance. The man get hurt in his second game. So at this point, you are looking at a situation where Trey Lance has missed three valuable years, especially in his development. And this is something that we already went through with Davis Mill. So in my opinion, if Trey Lance is on the board, scratch that and just stick to Davis Mills. Because if Davis Mills is the starting quarterback come week one of the 2023 campaign, that means that D'Amico Ryans definitely would have preferred to use a top overall selection on either Anderson or Carter. And at this point, you we could debate on who is so called the most talented quarterback, but I would rather have David Smith starting just because he have more experience as a quarterback in this league. Yeah, and and I would also like to add, I would personally like to see D'Amico Beal the same way, which we'll get into. Like John Lynch and and Kyle Shanahan built that Forty Nineers team, but not necessarily try to replicate it with the same players, uh, especially the same players that we are still clueless about. And Trey Lance is one of those players. We are clueless about what Trey Lance could possibly be for the Houston Texans. And you know, not, not even for the Texans, just in this league altogether. Now, how can Houston move away from the Patriot way and embrace a new approach I'm super excited to talk about that, so don't go anywhere. we got more Locked On Texans, the D'Amico Ryan Show. <laughs> the NFL playoffs are here. We are coming to a close. Got the Pro Bowl coming up, but then we got the big dance, the Super Bowl. And we're really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they are the number one sports book in America, 
FanDuel. That's what I'm talking about, man. And if you are new to FanDuel, that's even better. They have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. New customers join today to get with a $150 in free credit Free bets guarantee when you place your first $5 bet. Just sign up at fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on. Fanduel has all of your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads to player props. Plus, you can even combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with same game parlays. All on an app that's safe, secure, and easy to use. So football fans, whether you're Eagle, Chiefs, and I'm sorry if you're a Bigel fan because I know y'all going through it right now. Don't miss out. Place your first $5 bet to get $150 in free bets, win or lose, at FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Welcome back in, Locked On Texans listeners and viewers. Before we get out of here today, you guys have heard me on multiple occasions crack jokes about how the Houston Texans have been jocking the style of the New England Patriots for the past decade and some change, right? Hmm. And I've been critical about the Texans modeling and jocking the style of the Patriot way, the Patriot of the South, all of those jokes. And in order for this thing to work with D'Amico Ryans and the Houston Texans, that ideology has to stop. And let me say this, it's not bad to flirt with success. And it's not bad to try to, model what you deem to be successful and those take those steps in order to get to where you want to be in the promised land. And in the NFL, that's the Super Bowl, right? Like these these conferences, people pay $50 to these seminars and they sit around for an hour and a half, two hours, <laughs> and you get a break where you can go get some danishes and, you know, uh, you know, build connections and you listen to what other people are telling you they did to be successful. And if you follow these three steps, you too can be successful <laughs> in your life. And we've seen it and heard it all. Let me say that again, it's not bad to flirt with what has happened successfully for somebody else, but it is bad. And it is different when you don't have the tools or you do not coach to the strengths of what you have on your roster to create that success and with D'Amico Ryans, my question is, what do we believe D'Amico Ryans can immediately impact? Cody, I'll tell you a couple of things. Number one, the aggressiveness of the defensive play caller, the pre and post snap looks, dialing up different blitz from different levels of the defense. I think that'll help this team get to the quarterback, you know, get some more sacks and also be more effective in stopping the rushing attack. Houston, since the loss of DJ Reader, has been one of the worst defensive units in the NFL through this three-year span, maybe in NFL history, right? And when we look at D.C., which that was D'Amico Ryan's, you know, position, defensive coordinator, we also can look at development coach hmm. and the development of young guys, whether they are starters or rotational players. Players like Diamore uh, Door. Lenore, I hope I'm saying his name right, uh, the rookie cornerback, the second-year safety, who Faganga, uh, Kevin Givens, Charles Ominihu, and more. Hmm. Players have developed under D'Amico Ryans if he was a position coach or now as defensive coordinator. We've seen guys in year two make leaps from where they were in year one of, of his system, right? Again, whether that's him being a positional coach and coaching up some of them guys, and then the next year they come around and they are playing a whole lot better, and their intensity, intensity, and, 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 and aggression is there. And now as a defensive coordinator, we've seen players make leaps under D'Amico Ryan's. That's what I'm looking for: a, a coach that can finally develop young players, develop some of these guys. I think that has been one of Houston's biggest issues in the past 20 years. They have not been able to consistently develop players. Uh, outside of the greats, the Andre Johnsons, the J.J. Watts, the DeAndre Hopkins, the Deshaun Watsons. And in Deshaun Watson's case, I feel like he was never fully developed here because of the lack of creativity and offensive play calling in Bill O'Brien. They have to find ways to be able to develop guys from year one to year three or four. By the time that rookie contract is up 
or by the time their contract is up and they're ready to get out the door, or maybe stay in Houston, those guys should be able to be better than what they were when they first came to town. And that's what I'm looking forward to under D'Amico Ryans. Um, to you, all of the points that you just mentioned, John, in terms of player development coach and the Texans moving away from the Patriots way, I think it's all going to have to depend on whether or not they actually give these players a fair chance. Because you just mentioned a guy, Charles Amini, who could we f- truly fully say that he actually had a genuine true opportunity to go out there on the field each and every Sunday and showcase what he can do? I don't think so. And I and I take it a step further. Look at guys like Kiki QT, Lonnie Johnson Jr. Um, you know, I could throw more names out there. You know, there are several players that I can look back and say if they have gotten the right coach to develop under, but it's not just about developing. It's also going out there and having consistent snaps to learn from your mistakes, to learn from your mistakes, to actually reach the potential or come close to your potential of what you can do on the NFL level. And when you're talking about moving away from the Patriots way, the hiring of the Miko Ryans, I don't think we're going to fully get a full sense on whether or not the Houston Texans have moved on from that until the regular season starts, because how many guys this year, look, we could go down the list, Tyler Johnson, Tyrone Johnson, Eno Benjamin. Like there were so many players who could have went out there on the field and helped this organization. I know I say it every week, but because of this Patriots way, especially given the power that Nick Casario had over these last two years, I think they actually lost several good players in the process. Then you had other players, like the one I'm still pissed off about, Anthony Miller. You had so many players who can actually develop and learn and, and, and get genuine time. But this organization, this organization was just stuck too much to the Patriot way. So... Only time is going to tell. And, and I that think. was with that approach to how they treated players, their approach. Mm-hmm. With, with, it, it just it got to a point where are you in the business of coaching or are you only in the business of – I don't know, but it did, it did feel like this franchise was in the business of coaching, the coaching aspect, and, and putting players, good players around other players, right? And the thing about San Fran is – Charles O'Minnie, who has been a rotational player for that team, but he's been damn good when he's been on the field, mainly because they had the opportunity to put good pieces around him. Uh, and the likes of other players, it just seems like coaching, the aspect of coaching was lost in Houston. And I don't think we're going to get that with D'Amico Ryans. I think that we're going to get a, a guy that understands the analytics of the game now, the X's and O's of the game, who would – thrives in teaching the X's and O's of the game now and understand how to get the most out of these players. They may not be a full-time starter. That's okay. It's a 53-man roster. You need more than 12 guys on each side to win ball games. You're going to need a 17 guy. You're going to need a 23rd guy to come in and make plays. That is where I think when we look at two to three years down the line from now, we'll say, you know what? D'Amico took a guy like – Example, of course, Thomas Booker. And in a couple of years, Thomas Booker is contributing to this Houston Texas team with three and a half, four sacks, uh, a couple of run stuffs, getting after the quarterback, getting after the running back, making it difficult for them to run on them. And then we'll say, well, I don't think that'll be possible if Lovey Smith was still the head coach. I don't think that'd have been possible if D'Amico was never in town. Well, one thing is going to be the biggest determining factor in this. Will Nick Casario finally take a step back and let his coach and the coaching staff coach? There it is. Thank you guys for checking out today's episode of the Locked on Texans podcast. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Locked on Texans and like us on Facebook. Also, scroll over to YouTube. Keep running those numbers up as well. Subscribe, like, and comment on YouTube under the name Locked on Texans. And as always, I'm your host, Cody M. Davis. Please remember to follow me on Twitter at Cody Davis underscore 24. Once again, that's Cody, C-O-T-Y, D-A-V-I-S underscore 24. Until tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, we might have breaking news. We might not. But regardless of what goes on, goes on, we will be back here tomorrow. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, peace.